They fought so that they didn't have to run these streets through. They didn't win this fight on Sycamore, which was always intended to be a shopping center, movie theaters, you know, to really support the community. They intended that this would be a landscape sort of entry so the community would enter the shopping area through uh, this building wasn't in the original plan. So, you know, by the time they, they broke ground, this street had been cut through. But it would have been, as you see, it's sort of off kilter now. Um, so the landscape architect was Fred Barlow Jr., who was one of Reginald Johnson. He was a partner with a woman named Catherine Bashford. And they were one of Reginald Johnson's favorite landscape architects from the 20s on up. Um, he was born in Colorado, but grew up in Hollywood and went to Hollywood High. Graduated from Berkeley in 1926, uh, the largest class ever, eight people. So <laughs> it was still a pretty small, young sort of profession. So his first job was at the Greystone Mansion, so he needed to mansion. And then when the stock market crash happened, the man he was working for stopped getting work, and he went to work for Catherine Bashford. He became partner in 1936. So they. In 1939, when the funding came through, they really sort of took off. Uh, they broke ground in uh, February 1941. So by 1941, this Beaux-Arts formal symmetry was sort of out of fashion. Um, so what they, and it's also, you know, it's pretty monumental when you look at it from above. But when you're on the ground, you don't really get a sense of all this, you know, this framework. But also with the landscape, they. He, what he wanted to do was really soften that and, and not make the landscaped areas totally formal. So the most formal landscaped area was this entry court that we just, Galen just walked us through. And then through this north-south axis, that formal symmetry comes down, but then he starts to soften it a bit. And as we walk through, we'll look at some pictures, but there are formal areas within each garden court, but for the most part, it's sort of an asymmetrical balance. Uh, Pretty much uh, the plant palette was lots of shades of green with white flowers. Uh, so between the building and the... Uh, so this is where we are now. So all the pathways were decomposed granite. And then this was an LA of London plane trees. So from the sidewalk to the sidewalk was decomposed granite. And the intent was you would walk down the middle framed by these London plane trees on either side, sort of framing and directing your view. Um, in traditional Beaux-Arts landscape, this sort of frame view would have a terminus, a water feature or a sculpture or something. And so they didn't do that here. There was just this bed of a low ground cover. And then he planted a, a big group of sic California sycamore trees. So it's sort of a veiled view into this, you know, pretty breathtaking open green space. So you have a sense of anticipation going towards it, but it's not really exploiting that, that vista. So like that, sort of experience going through the clubhouse where you just get a glimpse and it sort of draws you out. Uh, a lot of California native or Mediterranean uh, climate plant species and trees. From the buildings to the sidewalks, one of five different ground covers. There was uh, jasmine, honeysuckle, Algerian ivy, English ivy. Um, so we'll talk a bit more, but this is a Julia Shulman photo from 1958, the kid riding the bike. Have been used to so the original plan was hey, is that me? <laughs> it could have been. And each garden for had a panel of